Hello, everybody. And yes, our worst fears were realized. Can you believe this? <clears throat> okay, let, let me pull up my notes here. Because this is... This is exactly what I was worried about. So today, we are still reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh yeah, here, let me... Okay. Um, we are reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. And um, let me pull this down a little bit. And I'll kind of hide down here. Um... <clears throat> And uh, the thing that I feared most has happened. As soon as we leave Castle Dracula and go back to Whitby and London and all this other stuff, um, the book takes a turn for the worst. Meaning, Bram Stoker does not know how to write women whatsoever. And maybe it... I don't know, maybe it's like uh, the the Bronte virus that has struck Mr. Stoker. Um, but maybe, 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 maybe back in those days, the only thing a woman wanted was to be married so she could dote over a man. And that's quite possible. But I still don't know if this is how women ever spoke. I know it's popular in Victorian literature for women to speak like this, but I don't know if it's real and it makes everything sound fucking stupid. So, let's get into it. Um, oh yeah, we gotta get up to chapter 5 before we get to chapter 6. And the other thing about this, some of these chapters are so fucking short just to fucking get cracking, like get the get the story moving. Um, but at the end of the day, who cares when the story isn't going anywhere? So let, let me let me let me let me let me help you out here. So we are going to be um, hearing from Mina Murray, Miss Mina Murray. Um, her journal, okay? And then we're also going to be um, hearing letters from Mina to Lucy and Lucy to Mina and Mina to Lucy. And then we're going to start hearing about all these other people. And some of their letters are even worse and shorter. Okay, so here we go. Mina writes a letter to Lucy talking about how excited... Oh, this is on the 9th of fucking May, by the way. And the last thing we heard was from uh, Jonathan Harker's journal on June 30th. So 9th of May, um, Mina's writing a letter to Lucy talking about how excited she is that maybe someday Jonathan will come home and um, all this other shit. But she's talking about learning shorthand so she could help him with his daily business. And the one thing I will say about this is that this is good because it goes back to um, Chekhov Stoker's gun about how Dracula wouldn't be able to make sense out of Jonathan Harker's journal. So that is one like clever thing he wove in here. Um, and then Lucy writes me and she's like, oh my gosh, Mina, guess what happened? I got proposed to three times today because I'm fucking the sexiest bitch in fucking England and um, she's like oh my gosh three proposals in one day and um, she she doesn't want to talk about Arthur yet because he's the one she likes but she talks about Dr. Seward who um, runs the sanatorium which just happens to be attached to Carfax Abbey. Okay? Um, and if you guys don't like my accents, that's fine, because I don't like the fucking writing of this part of the book. Um, and then um, she talks about how much he loves her, and she just couldn't be with him because she loves another. And if he can't... And then he's like, well, if I can't have you... 
And there is another, I wish you happiness, and I want you to always look at me as a close, dear friend. And then as soon as, like, one gets rejected, they just get up and leave, because that's what you do. You fucking throw yourself to the feet of some woman who's, like, barely old enough to fucking see over a steering wheel if they even drove cars then. And then he just fucking bolts. And then this American dude, Quincy Morris, okay, he comes up rustling and talking all his slang terms and doo -doo -doo boop boop. And um, she finds him just charming. Um, but his, uh, and then it goes into like how his um, vernacular as he speaks to her and wants to ride off into the sunset with her sexy caboose. And um, she's just like, hoo, 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 hoo. and then he's like, well, then give me a kiss, baby. Um, since you're not gonna love me. And so she kissed him, and it was very awkward, and she blushed a little bit. Um, so yeah, Bram Stoker couldn't fucking write a woman if he fucking was doing Connect the Dots, man. This is just, uh... And someone in the comments is gonna go, Well, you obviously haven't read blah 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 blah, because this is how all women are written back in the day. Whatever, I don't give a shit, like... Um, th this is, uh, dated isn't even the right word. This is just rough. And I mean, I'm sure in like some romantical kind of setting, um, writing like this is okay. Because I remember what, the first time I ever read this book, I think I was, um, 20. And... The paperback version of this book I had had this very, like, gorgeous Renaissance painting on the front. And it was very, it was romantic. And so I, I just went into it with everyone wants to fall in love and this is all about love and um, Dracula's heart will get broken and the whole fucking thing. And um, it was still rough, but anyway... So then, okay, um, we hear from um, Dr. Seward's diary on the 25th of May, where he um, is finally talking about um, Renfield. And so we learn all about Renfield and him catching flies and catching spiders and all this other stuff. And he's fucking nuts. And um, this, these little instances with um, Renfield is probably the most intriguing shit that happens here um and then we quickly go to a telegram from quincy to arthur inviting him to a campfire okay because this this is this is legit shit this is when the rubber meets the road and then guess what happens we immediately get a telegram from arthur to quincy accepting said invitation to said campfire so, um, if you're not on the edge of your seat yet, like, I, I, I have nothing for you. Because th this is what we call action-packed, okay? Action-packed stuff here. Um, so then, um, as, as thrilling as that was, we get to chapter six. And um, we're in Mina's journal, and it's very travel log -y again, talking about Whippy. And she's talking about the white lady and the bells at the sea. And all this other shit. And so, um, July 25th, she still hasn't heard anything from Jonathan. Lucy is marrying Arthur. Um, then we go to um, Dr. Seward again. And um, this is the 5th of June. Um, talking about Renfield. And then the 18th of June, he has all these spiders. The 1st of July, he has to get rid of the spiders and the flies. And he eats a fly right in front of the doctor. And then on the 8th of July, he has a sparrow. And on the 19th of July, he has a colony of spiders. And then he wants a kitten. And he asked for a kitten because he knew there was no way he would get a cat. But no one would tell him he can't have a kitten. Am I correct? Um, then on the 20th of July, all the birds were dead and missing and there were feathers and blood all over the place. And then Renfield got sick. So the detective prowess of one Dr. Seward said, I bet this here 
is Renfield ate raw birds, and now he's sick. So, um, I, I will give the doctor credit for um, solving this mystery. Oh, but now we're back to Mina, okay? And it's July 26th, and um, she hears that Jonathan is heading home from one of these faux letters um, from Jonathan that Dracula made him write. Lucy's been sleepwalking, so that's going to add some um, intrigue to this story. Um, but Lucy's not looking good. And on August 1st, there's still no John. And on August 6th, there's still no John. Lucy is more excitable. But something very interesting does happen here. Off in the distance, off in the distance, there is a strange boat acting strangely. Now this, th this, is where, this is where shit starts getting real. Okay, so things are going to start happening and it's probably going to start happening so quick that no one's going to know what to do, but Bram Stoker will somehow find a way to borify it a little bit um, for just a little bit longer. Um, the other thing I didn't talk about in here, um, there are long passages of where Mina and Lucy or just Mina are just talking to random old men in a graveyard and because of how Bram Stoker has been foreshadowing stuff I'm sure this is important shit but it doesn't feel important it feels boring as fuck and is not pushing the story along in any way shape or form the epistolary nature of this book in these two chapters is so fucking mind-numbing that I don't understand how anyone is like, oh, dude, I really fucking love this book. Those first four chapters, when we were just reading out of Jonathan's diary, even though he is the wettest of farts as far as protagonists go, because he's not really the protagonist. That, that, that was the bait and switch here. Um, there is going to be another protagonist who is going to show up. And Mina is also the protagonist. But there is one protagonist that is so badass um, that he will answer every question. He will be able to solve every riddle. Um, I think he comes in way too late. But, um, you know, we needed to have all of these... Uh, chapters of I don't know because like some people will say oh this is just building the characters up like so so you care about them I don't give a shit about any of these fucking people they're all awful and boring and shit so um, I don't know like I, I feel like I'm being a little too hard on it right now but this is why this book irritates the shit out of me because we had a really fun great opening and now we're like in the weeds with a bunch of fucking stick in the mud motherfuckers. <clears throat> and it's so funny because all of these horrible things will happen. And maybe it's just because Dracula is such a well known, like, not story. Because I think a lot of people don't really know the story of Dracula, but people know about him coming into the window and um, the pinpricks on the neck and all this other shit. And so us now reading this a hundred plus years later are like, oh, these people are so fucking stupid. Like, how am I supposed to feel any sympathy for these people? And then at the same time, everyone's in love with everybody and everybody wants to love one another, but they can't and they won't. And they, oh God, Jesus, shit. Um, it's just, it's fucking, it's really rough. But I think Dracula is written so fucking well, like the character Dracula. Um, and if memory serves, it's just going to get better. Um, and um, I'm not going to lie, I read ahead um, so I could be prepared for this kind of shit. And um, good God, 
um, I'm just going to say his name, Van Helsing. Um, he's kind of like Sherlock Holmes on crack, okay? Like, he fucking knows everything. And he, he waits a little bit to make sure that when he starts talking, he can trick anyone into any fucking confession or trick anyone into thinking that um, he's legit. And um, there is a part coming up that we will be talking about where um, if you ever wanted to know what, um, like... <clears throat> a literary blowjob is we're gonna see Dr. Seward um fillet um Van Helsing to Arthur um in some time here it's, it won't be right away but it, it's coming it's coming folks so anyway um hopefully this will be the last super negative um, review of what's going on in Bram Stoker's Dracula here. So again, chapters five and six, um, I would just say skip them, but you need to learn all of these amazing characters and all their amazing character traits. Like, they love hard, and then they leave the room. So, um, that's that's kind of how that's kind of how we roll. So um, until next time, everybody. I will talk to you later. Let me know down below what you think. All right, bye bye.